this is Photography Gamer. Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, I'll be looking at the NVIDIA Ansel Photo Mode. NVIDIA Ansel is an in-game capture engine allowing you to take screenshots in a variety of games if you have the necessary NVIDIA drivers installed on your system. Today I'll be using Deep Rock Galactic to demonstrate its features and functions and I'll show you a few examples of shots that I've taken using Ansel. Ok, so to enter the photo mode you press Alt and F2 on the keyboard. Now if you're using a controller, one thing I recommend is mapping those two key presses to a button that isn't used, like the share button on the PS4 controller for example. It just means you can enter the photo mode without having to lean over to your keyboard. I'll be using the DualShock controller and keyboard combinations to demonstrate these commands. So the insert key on the keyboard, that removes the HUD from the screen. So that's when you, if you just want to look at the image without all of the rubbish on there, or you want to do a natural screenshot yourself. The left and right sticks on the analog controller change the camera angle and the position of the camera. So this is the first thing you'll do when you're trying to find the composition, find the right angle. Then if you use L1 and R1 buttons, that rolls the camera. Rolling is essentially tilting. You press it one way, it tilts one way. You press it the other button, it rolls the other. Essentially, it creates dynamism, it creates a sense of movement, or it creates a kind of a surrealistic off-kilter feel. Then if you press L2 and R2, that's craning. Craning essentially is like the camera being moved on a crane up or down. If you go up, obviously you'll get more of an aerial shot. If you go low, it will create a bigger scale for your characters because if you're shooting low to high, things seem bigger. The D-pad direction buttons, they let you scroll through the on-screen interface, you know, up and down, left and right. And the X button will enter any of those specific menus that we will go into next. So that's the basics. So next we have filter type, right? So this is quite comprehensive. So the first type is brightness and contrast with five separate settings to change. First setting is exposure, which will raise the light levels in the image or lower them. Um, it's not like everything, it more emphasizes the brighter areas because it's to do with exposure rather than brightness. Next we have contrast, that will create more definition between the two, like sort of the light and the dark areas. But if you go too high on the contrast, it could look a bit ugly. If you want to do more subtle contrast, use highlights and shadows, which does the same thing essentially. Highlights, obviously you go up, it will lighten up the brighter areas. Down, it will do the opposite. Same with shadows. You want to make the shadows deeper or you want to make the shadows more light and cloudy, you can. Gamma, that kind of does all of them in one. So, you know, five settings there, really nice and comprehensive. Next one is black and white, and that has four settings. So intensity, that is, you know, 100% intensity is black and white. 50% is like desaturated 50%. So it's color, but half as much color. Enable depth, border distance, reverse depth mass. These are features that you can change parts of the image being in black and white. Like you could have 50% in the distance black and white, close up color. So nice things to play with, depending on how you want to sort of implement it. Next we have color that has tint color, tint intensity, temperature vibrance. So tint color gives you a certain different tinting to the image. You can slide up and down. Tint intensity says how much that tint will be present. Temperature, one end is more like warm, one end is cold. So that's really sort of white balancing. And then vibrance raises color, but not in such an extreme way as maybe saturation would. So it's kind of nice for a bit of a subtle increase. Next we have Colorblind, which has Protonopia, Deuteranopia, and Tritonopia. Now, I'm not colorblind, so I don't really know what those mean, but people who are colorblind, who need to sort of alter color settings to make the games look better for them, can use these. Again, I don't know these three particularly, but it's nice that they've featured that, because that's, that's a nice uh, addition. Thinks about other gamers, you know. Then we have details, so sharpen clarity, HDR toning and bloom. Sharpen and clarity, you know, sharpen makes the image look kind of, it does degrade it after a while. If you sharpen too much, it will look ugly. Same with clarity. You just, what you want to do with sharpen and clarity is just subtle. Get it to a point where it just makes it a bit more crisp, 
but without going too far. HDR toning is HDR toning, what you'd imagine. You know, it kind of really brightens everything up. And the bloom, bloom is, you know, it gives a sort of a glowy kind of almost like Vaseline type lens effect, you know, like very sort of cloudy and dreamy. Next, we have depth of field. So we have focus depth. That's where the focus is going to you know, be originated from. The far blur depth, the near blur depth, which is really nice. So you can choose how severe the blur is going to be at both ends of the image, the blur radius and the invert depth option lets you flip it. Blur radius is like how deep the blurring is. Now you can do some really beautiful blurring on this. It's very, very nicely put together. Really good depth of field options here. Obviously, if you want to have everything in focus, you can do that. You just have to play around with the settings and find that. But it's nice to just blur things in the background to create a bit of mystery. Next, we've got green screen. Now, this is uh, obviously anyone who knows what green screen is. You can isolate something in the image and everything else is green. So you can choose the focus depth of the green screen, the background color or add a new background or invert that depth. I use this if I want to isolate a character. I take, then I do a screenshot, I take it into Photoshop, I get rid of the green, and voila, I've got a PNG that I can just stamp on another image. Great for cover art, great for stuff like that. You can do it with video as well, a bit more complicated, I won't go into that here. Next we have letterbox, horizontal scale and vertical scale. So letterbox is basically black borders. You can put them however you want them to create like a sort of a panoramic cinematic shot or make a sort of a portrait orientation shot. Do as you please. Next one is old film. So we've got gamma, exposure, contrast, vignette amount, filter strength, film dirt strength. So there's a lot there. An old film setting, I would say, is for games that I wouldn't use it in sci-fi because it doesn't really fit. Westerns, medieval games, RPGs, you know, things that have that old grittiness, old world feel. So very nice options, but I wouldn't say it's practical for a lot of games. Next is special effects. We've got retro, sketch, halftone, and sepia. So they all add a different feature. You can use those sliders, see what the effects are, mix and match, use one, use two, use three, use a bit of every one of them, see what they do, you know. Again, not something I would use much, but nice to have the option. Next we have stickers. So you can select a sticker, move it left or right, up or down, change its size, rotate it, affect its opacity, you can change its depth as well. So like I say, it's a bit like the green screen depth. You can put a sticker behind something in the image, which is very cool. The only problem is obviously this photo mode is generic for lots of games. So it doesn't have game specific stickers, which is a bit of an, an annoyance, but you know, that's, it is what it is. Next we have tilt and shift, tilt and shift. Well, tilt and shift lenses basically allow you to do that. They tilt and shift the lens. So it kind of, alters the perspective of the lens what it does it creates an unusual quality it creates a line of focus rather than a depth of focus so you can do some very interesting things with it so you can have everything in focus from the back to the front in a line and everything else out of focus so it's kind of very playful you can do the axis blur size blur curve really good for sur surrealistic creepy imagery or just odd stuff. Play around with it. It's very practical. It's got some nice uses. If you use the one on Instagram, they have a tilt and shift on there, similar principle, but this has probably got a little bit more advanced features. Then we've got vignette. A vignette is a dark border around the image. You know, the idea is it centralizes your viewpoint. So you can do it very dark or you can do it just subtle. So it's sort of very sort of delicately, gradually getting lighter from the dark border. Then we have a new setting which is style transfer so you can enable that choose a style choose a quality that is a separate 60 megabyte download i don't use it much because it does suck a lot of the ram um, but it's there if you want to apply certain styles then we have game setting now we have high quality which is a tick box you have bloom intensity and scale bloom is the same as i said before it creates a dreamy washed out kind of Vaseline type lens effect. Very nice, very dreamy, good for beauty shots, I would say. Then we have camera and capture. Now this is one you'll use on every shot. Field of view, it's essentially like a zoom. As you change it, it will go in, in sort of chunks, gradual chunks or go out. If you go too far out, it will look curved like a fisheye then, so it will look weird. But I use this usually once I framed my shot to just make adjustments to the, the composition roll it's what we covered earlier tilting grid of thirds grid of thirds is very useful because 
Doing a good picture with nice composition and balance, the grid of thirds allows you to use that to sort of balance off all of the aspects of the image so you can place things equidescent from each other, creating a nice subtle uh, feel in the image that feels together. You know, everything feels connected spatially. And then we have raw HDR, which you know is what I mentioned about HDR earlier. And finally, there's camera type. So you've got screenshots, super resolution screenshot with resolution sliders, 360 shots, stereo shots, 360 stereo. Now I just use the normal screenshot. Super resolution is ridiculous. Like that is about the big a screenshot as you could possibly imagine. Like you could do a super resolution screenshot and you could crop it for days and it's not going to lose definition. I just use the regular screenshot, but they're there, options if you want them. Okay, so that is Ansel. Now I've used it a lot on Deep Rock Galactic and it's been very, very good. I have to say lots of functions. Obviously it's a general photo mode, so it doesn't have specific logos, specific stickers for specific games. It just covers a broad church. Lots of functionality, lots of functionality, so much, like too much for any one photo, you know, so there's always something there to be used. Negatives, it can be a bit fiddly, you know, do you want to use a controller? Do you want to use a keyboard? It's, it's I don't know, I think interface wise could be a little bit better, but in terms of what it's got content wise, it's fantastic. Also, it deals with blurring beautifully, like really clean, clean bokeh. Bokeh is what essentially photography nerds call the blur. So good and bad points, yeah. Scoring, well, I mean, I would say this is the best photo mode I've ever used because it's got so much there. Everything you could possibly want and more is in there. The green screen stuff is like a lifesaver for me because I do a lot of cover art for reviews and videos on YouTube so I can isolate things, cut them out, amazing. I mean, it does use a bit of jargon in terms of photography that you might not understand, but I think it's a great photo mode. I would really recommend it. And it also is used in a vast amount of games. I will put a link in the description to like a list of games that use Nvidia Ansel. But yeah, scoring wise, I would give it 10 out of 10 because it is the best photo mode I've used in terms of all of the things that you can do. So as I said, taking a few photos, I've put them up while I've been reviewing it you can do some really nice stuff. So yeah, if you've got it, give it a go. If you've got one of the games that apply it in the game, try it out. It's very good indeed. Okay, that was another episode of the VP Guide. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful. Any questions, pop them in the comments. But for now, this is Photography Gamer signing off. Thank you.